Well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Jerry's homesick. Started feeling really bad about two o'clock this morning, and uh, not sure what it is because so many things have similar similar uh, symptoms. Hopefully, it's not the flu. But we'll, hopefully, he'll find out. Uh, so I'm going to fill in for tonight. We're not going to do Thessalonians. We'll uh, do something a little different. Plan of salvation. Jay just shared it with us as we often, as we try to do all, each one of our invitations. The second step is believe. So what I'm going to discuss tonight is what does believe mean? What should we believe? So the board's up here, which means I expect a lot of people to, to come up with ideas. What should we believe? Okay, I'm gonna put that down here. Now there's another lesson here too. Jay wrote really big tonight. I'm proud of him, but he wrote really light. And most of our young people, when they get up here and put it on the board, it's like they're trying to use just a little bitty tip of the marker. So we, we have some more training to do. Um, I could see it because I'm sitting up here. I don't think anybody back there could see it. Uh, what else do we believe in? God exists. That's, God exists. What else? Truth. Hmm? Truth. Truth. Put that in here somewhere. What else do we believe? Jesus is the Son of God. I'm sorry? Jesus is the Son of God. There you go. Uh, we'll put that one right here. What else do we need to believe? There's more. <laughs> Big pardon? Yep. And that's kind of an addition here, but that's an important one. Because in uh, John, in one of his letters, wrote that the Antichrist is someone who doesn't believe Jesus actually was physical. Abraham. Okay. I missed that last part, Abraham. You said 1% deity, 1% man, and then... Okay. And as it should be, we're going to have a lot of stuff about Jesus. What other things do we need to believe? This is not only just for us who are Christians, but for those who are trying to teach. What do they have to believe? The Bible is the truth. Is the truth. I'm sorry? The Bible is the truth. There you go. What else? God's the creator. Talk a little more about that. I find that very interesting and in, in how that positions itself in the Bible. What else do we need to believe? God is alive. God is alive. Is that you, Joy? I, I say your voice sounded awful deep. <laughs> God is alive, Joy. What did you have? There's heaven and hell. There's a heaven and hell. That's good. That's not even on my list. What else? Huh? 
Huh? We have so we have to have to have to believe in being faithful. What else? Abraham. After um, you know, if, if you do get baptized, then you have to repent. Not necessarily get saved, but you do have to repent of uh, all of your sins for as much as uh, it is in the You have to repent of your sins. Yes. So you have to believe repentance is important. Yes. That's something to talk about. That's getting close to one of the ones I'm, things I'm looking for. Anything else? I'm hearing more than one voice, and I can't handle that. I can't even handle one normally. Baptism is essential. Baptism is essential. Leola? I can come. We can be saved. I already forgot what you said, JC. <laughs> Baptism is necessary. Okay. Those two are very much related. Okay, this is getting pretty, pretty, pretty good. Got, I got one more two things in mind. I'm sorry. There was a res there will be a resurrection, or, or, or he was resurrected. He was resurrected. It's one thing to say he's dead. It's another thing to say that. What else? It'll be a judgment day. And that kind of ties in with heaven and hell. That, yeah, Joy. God loves us. What else? Okay. Heaven is obtainable. It's always a challenge when I get multiple syllable words. What's that? Alpha and Omega. Oh, he's the Alpha and the Omega. That kind of goes with God exists, kind of with Jesus. Anything else? God is in control. Hey, Joe. The Holy Spirit exists and intercedes. Okay. We don't have the Holy Spirit up here, so that's good. Believe it or not, there's one or two more I'm looking for. Okay, that would, that, um, yeah. I'm going to put down the gospel. Um, I 
and that goes strongly into this lesson. What else? What's that? I'm hearing I'm hearing part of that. The Lord is of all of us. Okay. One one Lord. I need an, I need a <laughs> not an interpreter. I need a, I need a, a, a cut off man to pass it on. Cotton price is sin free. I'm still looking for one basic concept. God does not lie when you trust him. God does not lie? Okay. Carol? Not everyone will be saved. Not everyone will be saved. And that goes down to this. One thing I'm definitely not good at is hearing things behind me. <laughs> well, what was that? I heard some of it. Okay, have to understand so. Got that? Okay, that, that goes back to the gospel and one of the key steps. Yep. What's that? The church is essential. Yep. Yeah, we're getting into a lot of things dealing with uh, with the Christian life. Uh, church, uh, confession, those are all tied to it. Lots of grammar. Um, worship and coming to worship. Whoop. Anything else? O and O. <laughs> you have to believe in self. And I think going with that, you have to believe that you're worth saving is part of a kind of thing. I'm looking for something else. Okay. That kind of goes here. What else? Abraham. Okay. God will add us to the church. Some of these things kind of come along later. Some things come early. I'm still looking for one more thing. What's that? Always the same. He's unchangeable. The Alpha Omega. Um, and that is actually in one of my favorite books, Malachi, where God actually makes that statement. I don't change. I'm the same. So when you start talking about people about the God, the Old Testament, and the New Testament, it's the same God. His covenant with us has changed, but he hasn't changed. He still hates the stuff he hated in the Old Testament. He still loves man. New Testament to Old Testament. Those things are still there. Anything else? Huh? Give you a hint? 
okay, here's a hint. What leads to godly sorrow? No, godly sorrow leads to repentance. What leads to godly sorrow? Huh? What? Faith. Hmm? Okay, that's, that's what I was looking for. Not so much conviction, but that's, that's part of it. When you, start, when you start working with people, and you start trying to, this is a really good list, by the way. Come up with some, a lot more that's on my list. I was a little more simplistic. But when you start working with people, one of the things you have to start with, with anybody, do you believe in God? Do you believe there's a God? If you don't, forget the rest of the stuff. None of it matters. You have to believe in God. And, there's, and we got people today who profess that they don't. We have a lot of people uh, who will say they're atheists. Others are humanists. They may not declare themselves as such. And their basic fundamental concept is there is no God. So if you're going to work with somebody, if they start off with that there is no God and they stay there, then baptize them doesn't do any good. The one thing that's not up here but is, but it's kind of implied, there is one God. That's something we have to get people to come to understanding is there's, there's not all the different gods that we see out there in the religious world. Even, even the concept of there being a God but not being the same God. There is one God. Uh, and that's who we want to come to know. If you remember uh, Paul on Mars Hill, they had all these, these uh, altars and, every, and things dedicated to all these gods. And he says, I'm here to talk to you about the God. The one you have is an unknown God because you don't know him. I'm going to introduce you to him. And when we start working with people, we need to be introducing them to the God, the one God. Not what somebody's concept is here and there. It's what the one God that we can, that we can show them. Um, one of the ways you do that is God as the creator. Now, we're going to use the Bible always in talking to somebody. But if you don't have some things to, to, to get them into the Bible, it, it, you may not, may not get them. And that's one of the things that, that's going to be important. You want to do enough work not only to, to make sure they believe that there is a God, uh, that Jesus Christ is his son. Those are important steps. Um, you have to believe in, in somehow to understand that the Bible is really God's word. It's the inspired word of God. Uh, you have to establish an authority somewhere. And the way it's interesting is God the creator. We just did, J.C. says was seven years. That's a little bit of an exaggeration. But we just did Isaiah. I don't know how many times, I didn't go back and count it. I should have, but I didn't go back and count it. God kept saying, I'm the creator. He says it to Job. When you look and study Job, I am the creator. He uses that over and over again to establish in people's minds his authority and what he is. Romans chapter 1, it talks about people there. To me, the second half of, ch of chapter 1 talks about humanists. It talks to people who are into the world, they're doing all these things. And he starts off with saying, people see the evidence of God in themselves and the world around them. So Paul says, there is no reason not to believe and understand who God is because of the creation. He's the creator. So Old Testament, New Testament, one of, the, one of the chief things that people in the Bible use and God himself uses is saying, look, he's the creator. Therefore, everything around you, he knows, and everything around here, you is here because of him. And therefore, you ought to be paying real close attention to what he wants. Now, as you're going and studying with people, one of the things that has to happen 
at some point, you can talk to them about Jesus Christ, but the, what you have to come with is, why is Jesus important? And the answer is, our sins separate us from God. Without Jesus Christ, you're lost. So we have God, we have him as the creator, he's in control, he's the Alpha and Omega, uh, he's the O and O, those big words that uh, Sherry's saying, uh, he's alive, all those things. But the, the, the reason we're talking to you, the reason we're, we're, we're trying to work with you, the reason as Christians we need to stay faithful, all those things together is, our sins separate us from God. And if we don't have our sins addressed, we're going to hell. That judgment day is coming. And once you believe there's a God, you have to believe in the, what he has said about, about that and that there, he will have a judgment day. There will be a, a resurrection to life and a resurrection to condemnation to, to, uh, to death. And... Uh, that's the one thing there. If you, don't have, if you don't have convictions of sins, there's no godly sorrow. Hearing the word leads us to godly sorrow. We need to con con convict people that they have to take action in their lives. There, there's something they need to be doing rather than just sitting back and saying, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, with a conviction of sins, they begin to understand that they need repentance. They need to turn away from those sins. They need to stop doing those things and, and say, I'm, I wish I had never done them. That's repentance. That should lead us to wanting Jesus Christ as our Lord, needing his blood to cleanse us of our sins. We need, then we're ready to confess him as Lord, and then we're ready to be baptized for the forgiveness of sins, so we can come in contact with his death. We can be baptized into his death just like he was, well, we buried with him, and that's where we get in contact with the cleansing blood. But if you don't, if you don't get to, if, if this is not real, and this is not real, the rest of it doesn't really happen. You have to believe there's a God, and have to believe you have a relationship with God, and right now, as a sinner, it's a bad relationship. That's, that, that's where things have to happen. And recognize as a Christian, if we get back into our old self, if we go back doing the things we did before, if we go back into sin, if we go back repeating those things we've already repented of, we're in trouble. We've fallen away. So the, 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 the belief that we need, we, we often talk about with people, and we see the thing, they say, you know, like when, when, um, Philip was talking to the Ethiopian eunuch. The Ethiopian eunuch says, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He gives a good, good confession. So a lot of times people say, well, that's what we're trying to get people to say. That shows their belief. It, it's more than that. A lot, lot led up to that confession by the Ethiopian eunuch. Because part of his confession then was, well, I need to be baptized. Whoa. I guess that's a word in Ethiopia that just came out of the blue, right? No, it's what Philip taught him. Taught him that your sins separate you from God and that he sent his son to be that atonement, to be that payment so your sins could be forgiven and your sins are forgiven by obeying the gospel and being baptized. We don't see all that groundwork that Philip did. We don't know how long he, he sat in the chariot with the Ethiopian eunuch, but obviously he started in Isaiah and worked right up through the plan of salvation. And all these things had to be touched in order for that to happen. The Ethiopian eunuch already believed there was a God. He believed there was one God. Those things were, were part of his life, or he wouldn't have been coming to Jerusalem to begin with. But there's, there, there's, there's a lot of things we need to do, and one of the things that we have to get to with people some point to, to establish authority is the concept that the Bible is God's inspired word. That, that we have to come to. <coughs> and again, 
One way you can do that is go back to his creation. I've taught it here in, in, in the adult class. I've taught it in the teen class. Um, I'll be teaching it some more in a, in a class I'm going to be starting uh, this Sunday. There is so much insight and scientific knowledge in the Bible that helps us to establish in people's minds that this really is an inspired work. It's not just some different letters put together that some men wrote type of thing, which is what you'll hear from people. It's just a bunch of people have written letters and somebody put them all together. You look at the Bible, you look at, at, at first its, its completeness and its, its uh, consistency throughout, from, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. The themes are all the same. The themes are there over and over again. The, the concepts are there. Uh, as, as we found studying Isaiah, there's so many things in Isaiah and a lot of the Old Testament prophets that's in the New Testament. And going back and forth between the two is very easy because you can see that consistency. But there, there's scientific fact, there's, there's, there's information in the Bible that's not, that wasn't available at that time, certainly, in many cases, wasn't available for several thousand years later. Uh, and, 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 and other of facts in the Bible that establish it as being unique in knowledge. That helps get people to understand it had to be inspired other than by man. The scientific information in the Bible is amazing. It's accurate. It's different than what was believed in the ancient world and other, other cultures uh, and has been proven right time and time again uh, down through the through the centuries, the millennium, by scientists and by those doing uh, doing study, uh, whether it's medical medical evidence, it's um, it's um, dealing with um, things of our physical world, like paths of the sea and things of that sort. There's a lot there, and even it was accurate in in, it, in its inclusion of various uh, sites and people from ancient time. Uh, for a long time, a lot of the people who wanted to prove the Bible wrong uh, took the position is that there is no evidence of the city of Ur. It's in the Bible, and they said, it doesn't exist. There's no evidence of it. Nobody else talks about it or anything else. Well, a few years ago, here in St. Louis, we had a display at, at the uh, Museum of Contemporary Art of artifacts from the city of Ur. It was discovered. So it, it's amazing how there's things like that that people try to claim is not true because archaeologists haven't found it, that then archaeologists find. Now, other scientists have discovered truths that the Bible talks about. So we have, we have, to, we have to make these steps. Uh, God exists. You can go back and forth which one's next and most important. Um, Obviously, we want, to, we want people to understand who Jesus is, that he is God, he is part of the Godhead. Uh, that can be a hard concept for a lot of people. Uh, the Bible talks about God is one. You know, that's, that's, that's what um, uh, Islam, one of their, one of their, uh, their uh, statements of faith is, God is one. And part of that is to say, okay, what we believe is not right because we say there's a Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, the Bible tells us those are all the same. They're one. That is a difficult concept for a lot of people to get to. And maybe you won't have to worry about that as you go through and you, and you teach that. But the idea is somewhere in all that, you've got to come up with that their, their sins are a problem. A lot of people don't think they sin. There's a lot of really good people out in the world who are not Christians. They do a lot of good works. They care about other people. Um, and so they don't think they have sin in their lives. They don't recognize that they do. And that's part of what we have to do is, is show them, yes, you do. And no matter how good you think you are, that's not going to get you into heaven. That, that becomes, that becomes a, a, real, a real issue. Abraham. Yeah, that's a pretty interesting point that you bring it up. Um, I mean, just reminding me that being a good person, as you were saying, the Bible is not good enough. Being a good person <coughs> just means God's gracious. You take it one day less than being uh, nice by nature. 
Yep. Yep. We, we need to be sanctified, we need to set apart. Uh, no matter how good we are on this earth, uh, it's not, we haven't obeyed God's will. Uh, I've got a lot of notes and a lot of things to back up some of these things here, but one of the things I, that we definitely want to, to make people aware of, belief. A lot of people in, in, in the religious world um, substitute belief for faith. They're not the same. Faith is broader than just believing. Uh, uh, faith requires action. Faith requires uh, doing God's will. Matthew 7, 21, I, I, I quote all the time, Jerry quotes all the time, but it's real. There's going to be people who believe in Jesus Christ on the day of judgment. They're going to say, we served you all this time. We did things in your name. And Jesus is going to say, I don't know you. They believe. We have, we have that, that uh, idea out there that, they, that believing is enough. They go with John 3.16. They ignore the first part of chapter 3 of John, where you have to be born again of the water and the spirit. They go to John 3.16. See, there it is. All you have to do is believe. And if you believe, you're saved. And we have people doing the sinner's prayer saying, I believe, and they say, that's enough. Now you're, now you're in good shape. Uh, one, of, one of the worst, most deceiving doctrines out there. And it's used over and over again by so many denominations today. It's amazing. It's not biblical even. So when we talk about biblical authority, it's not there. So that makes it even, even more puzzling as to why people fall for that, except it's easy. We like things easy, don't we? We like things to be real easy to do. Um, Walmart started a new program, and you can actually email or, I guess, call in, place your order, and they got this poor Walmart person walking around with these big carts full of bins. In our Walmart, they're changing all the aisles, so these people are as mystified as, as I am, as where everything is. They're filling these bins, and you come in and pick it up when it's ready. That's easy. We like easy. Um, being a Christian is not easy. We've had a lesson on count the cost. JC's teaching, count the cost. There's cost involved. There's things you have to give up. There's things you have to commit to. And that gets down to a lot of these things that we've talked here about being faithful. But, you know, we, we, we go down through these things. God exists. Uh, our sins. Jesus Christ. That he is the, um, the one who's redeemed us with his blood. Those are all necessary steps in order to get somebody in that. And then one of the things they have to come understanding is there is a heaven and hell. There is a judgment day. There are consequences to either believing properly or not believing properly. Being in Christ or not being. That's another thing. Um, we talk about the church. We talk about a lot of things here. But one of the things you have to have in, in, as you go through and talk with somebody, you have to believe that you have to be in Christ to be saved. And that brings you again back to baptism. How do you get into Christ? But if we don't start with God exists, if we skip over that, and take that for granted, we can be greatly misled and disappointed in the results. People have to believe that. They have to have their sins and that there's consequences, that there is a heaven and hell, there is a judgment coming. Um, Paul, JC will know what, and, or Joe will know which letter it's in. Paul wrote something very, very interesting. If there's no resurrection, if Jesus wasn't, well, they're starting to thumb through their Bibles. It's probably in 2 Corinthians from there all the way to Revelation. That's what I'm, I'm going to guess that. I'm going to cut off 1 Corinthians and Romans. It's what? You're going to say it's 1 Corinthians? Really? I missed it by a couple chapters. 
Um, he says, if there is no resurrection, we're the most foolish of men. If there's, no, if there's nothing to be gained by obeying God, he says, then why do it? If this is all we have, if there's no resurrection, if this life is it, this is it, there's nothing else, he says, let's, let's, let's eat, drink, and be merry. Let's enjoy what we have here because this is all that, that there is. It's not all there is, and that's, that's the conviction we have, to, we have to, to, to work on people on to understand is the life after this is more important than this life. Or maybe the way they put it around. The hardships of not being resurrected in life are so horrendous, they make what happens here on this earth pale by comparison. And it starts with believing there's a God, understand that Christ is our, is, is our Savior and that His blood uh, redeems us, conviction of our sins, all that has to be somehow backed up and, uh, and, and authority given at the Bible is the Word of God. Those are the basic fundamentals you have to work on. That creates this foundation of faith that J.C. talked about. That's how we build it. And then once we build that foundation, to complete it, we have to, we have to obey the gospel. But that leads us there. Without, the, without taking those steps, uh, that God exists. Jesus Christ is His Son and our Savior. That, there, that we are sin separated from God and the Bible is God's word, we cannot bring people to obey the gospel. If they do, they're doing it very superficially. They're doing it because you're, 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 you're a, a great charismatic speaker. Uh, they like you a lot, whatever it is that they're going to say, I obey the gospel. It's not because they've been convicted. And, and that's what we have, we have to get to. We're way past uh, the close and I apologize. I've got a lot more notes. I've got a lot of scriptures to back up the things that we talked about here. But one thing I want to mention too, belief is misused in a lot of denominations. Like I said, you have, you have the sinner's prayer. The other ones will say, well, that's all you have to do is believe. And they'll say faith only. Well, the, the word faith only appears in James where it says we're not saved by faith only, which is interesting. But they go the other way. They go, they go the way of Martin Luther who believed in faith, faith only, and in, and in his mind, faith meant belief. People substitute the word belief for faith, and, and that's, and that's, that's a, uh, uh, doing an injustice to the scriptures. When people come up with that, and they say, oh, works have nothing to do with it. Let me find out my note, because I, I can't remember the exact, I've, I've memorized this over and over again, and every time I do, I forget it again. John 6. 28 and 29. Jesus' disciples come to him and say, what should we do to work the works of God? And what is his answer? This is the work of God that you believe in him who he sent. Belief is a work. So these people out there who spout this stuff saying, oh, work's have to do with it. Guess what? You're saying belief has nothing to do with it because it's a work. And uh, it goes back to, do they really read the Bible when they spout all this stuff? And I'm talking about just people we meet every day. I'm talking about preachers in the denominational world. They don't read the Bible. And if you show them passages in the Bible, they'll come up with some left field thing to try to divert you from what the, what the passage says. Read the Bible, see what it says, show people what it says. If they, if they throw out some of these things like belief and start misusing belief, show them the right way to look at it. And there's, and there's a lot of scriptures on that. We'll stop right there and uh, get everybody uh, home and uh, appreciate your attention and your, and your input tonight. Let's have a word of prayer before we leave. Our Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you so much for our study tonight. We thank you for the opportunity we have to, to share thoughts and exchange ideas. 
and to continue to grow in our understanding of your word. Let us all make sure that our faith is strong, that it's, it's built on a foundation of, 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 uh, of understanding of your word, that we truly believe the things that the Bible tells us, that we understand what those things are and how they impact our lives. We thank you that uh, you have given us the scriptures as a, as a means of study, means of knowledge, and a means of coming to understanding. And we hope that we'll spend time making sure that we do understand and that we do uh, make these fully part of our lives. And we thank you for your son. Without the, without the Bible, without the scriptures, we would have no understanding of him and his purpose. And we thank you, Lord God, that we do have an understanding that he is your son, he is our savior, that his blood washes away our sins, and that his resurrection is a promise that there is a resurrection to come. We thank you, Lord God, for many things, and certainly we thank you for the church and the opportunity we have not only to come together like this in fellowship and study, but also to be able to work and to make sure that our faith is not dead, that we do have works that we're doing, that we are serving you and serving our, our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. We ask for a blessing upon those who are ill. We think of Jerry right now and hope that this is not something that will develop into something uh, more severe, that he can get some medicines and get some treatment and get back to better health. We think of Vicki, we think of Joni, we think of Earl, uh, Tim, uh, Liz, uh, so many others that, uh, that have, have illnesses. As the times we do get a chance to see people get better and, and we need to be thankful and, and thank you for that. And we know that when there's times where it's just not uh, gonna happen, that we do lose people. And we certainly are beginning, continuing to lose family members and loved ones and pray you're with those who are, who are, who are mourning. We think especially of, of the Barnes and Whitesides and, uh, and their losses in the Dawson family. And we pray that you give them comfort. Help us each day to do your will, each day to be repentant, each day to be desirous of, of being with you in heaven. Let us always be willing to express and, uh, to, and to declare our love for you. And let it be a, a love that includes all of our being. We pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you.